Uh, what do I do uh, when I don't feel fully utilized? So this guy reached out on LinkedIn. He is a automation engineer. And he said, my name is such and such, and I'm an automation engineer in the Northeastern United States. I got into automation out of college. I'm going on year two currently. I see what being an automation engineer can be, and it is so interesting and can be so fulfilling. Uh, however, I don't feel fully utilized, and it is extremely disheartening. Do you have any advice for someone in my position? I love the industry and its possibilities, but I fear if I stay this stagnant for too long, I won't be able to gather the right experiences to advance my career. I love being an engineer, and I want to be the best. Any guidance you can provide is much appreciated. Thanks, Walker. I love the YouTube channel best. And then his name. Appreciate the shout out. Um, you know, you're going through something that I think a lot of us have gone through um, in this industry. Um, he didn't say I, I'm a, but based on the way he described his job, I don't think he works for. Um, I think he works for an end user, but through a contracting company. Um, so what I'll say is if you are with an end user, the working for the end user is going to be the most disheartening depending upon how um, like bureaucratic, uh, politically driven and legacy that organization is, okay? Uh, you know, Purnell's iron law of bureaucracy, how, how well Purnell's iron law of bureaucracy has set in at that organization. But that being said, even, even working for the utilizing your capabilities doesn't mean that all is lost. I mean, I've shot lots of videos where I talk about, well, how did I develop my skills if my client, if my uh, employer didn't first understand the value of what it is I was trying to sell to them, right? Or, or I was trying to do for them. And the answer was, I got forgiveness, not permission. So I found opportunities to improve processes to use my engineering skill and the strategies I developed around the unified namespace um, to first improve my job, make my job easier. And by proxy, I was making the jobs of the people who had my job easier as well. So a really good example here would be uh, when I was a, an, um, I worked in the electrical group for in a steel mill okay and my job was 50 percent engineering and 50 percent support okay uh so on certain shifts my job would be to just support the production teams so i would be the one troubleshooting any automation issue that we ran into or i would be die i'd be working with the electrician and mechanic to diagnose some issues, say on the stacker or in the rolling mill or with the DCS system. The other half of my job was doing projects and that was dependent upon, we were on rotating shifts and it depended upon which shift I was working on. So like in any given week, if I was on say a day shift on a Friday, when there, when we had many people from my department in, then I was working on projects and there was one person who was tasked with being the support engineer, okay? So, but if I was the only one on, then I wasn't doing any project work. I was just supporting production. Okay. Well, supporting production meant, you know, to keep us busy, they would give us these rounds that we would have to do. They'd give us a clipboard with a piece of paper and we'd go take a bunch of measurements. We check the level in some tanks. We'd check the pressures over here and the temperatures over there. And, you know, we'd, we'd, uh, inspect the variable frequency drives and you know we do all these pretty ridiculous things right and it was on paper and then i have to go make a copy of it and i have to file it and all this jazz i remember thinking they're only doing this so i'm not sitting in a chair taking a nap like so why don't i just automate this so i i went through and i and, and so i used my skill to just go through and i said you know i'm going to automate this process so i'm going to here are all the data points on this sheet that i can just pull automatically. All I got to do is install WonderWare historian, put in a, you know, put a driver in DAS ABC IP and um, I'll be able to connect to these um, 
data points and extract them automatically. The second thing I need to do is I make I need to make a, a digital form, a, U, a, a software driven UI to collect the rest of the data and merge both of them together into one digital document that I could then just email out. And I could reduce, it was called the round sheet. I could reduce the rounds from three hours of my shift, which is how long it took to do it by foot to down, down to like 15 minutes. And now I could take that time and I could work on my projects, the stuff that I wanted to do. Like, uh, you know, I was tasked with building the automation for a, you know, a, a rail car that moved back and forth through the shipping department. Right. Um, I was tasked with, um, doing data collection on some of the more remote um, processes in the rolling mill, right? So I went through and I did that that project myself. I wrote what I, I sketched it out. Here's what I'm going to do. And then I just did it to make my job easier to free up the three hours for me. Then I showed the other guys in my department what I did and offered to them to let them do it if they wanted to do it as well. And here's how you, Here's how you access it. And they all adopted it. Okay. Then it was once all of us had adopted it, our manager had to sign off on it or come up with some reason why we couldn't use it. Right. It's what you do is you use your engineering skill to fully utilize yourself, not have someone fully utilize yourself on your behalf. That's the approach that you take. One other piece here. And I can't stress this enough. Okay. There is no reason why anyone coming out of college right now or coming out of tech school or coming out of high school, getting your first job. There is no reason why you have to go work someplace or co work for an organization that doesn't share your values. Okay. So for me, I always made sure I selected employers who believed in a lot of the same things I did that like people matter. They're not a number. Okay. Um, that le uh, being a leader is a responsibility and a privilege, but it doesn't make you special, right? It just means you have a skill set that makes you better suited for leadership. But that isn't that isn't a credit to you. It's a responsibility being entrusted to you, right? And uh, I'll say this: I sent a message to. Uh, my boys this morning, you know, and I said, um, you know, you boys need to be making a dent in the universe, maximizing your genetic potential and building a legacy. Okay. Real men are stoic. They're calm under pressure and they're purposeful. So make sure you hit the gym, make sure you build a network of similar men, get educated, start a business, be a mentor, leave your mark, build a legacy family by loving through provision and protection. That's what I sent to my, my boys this morning. I sent that because being a leader, being a father is a responsibility. It's a great responsibility. And I made sure that I only worked with, for companies that understood that the, the people that they put in leadership were responsible for something greater than the bottom line. Okay. And that is they're responsible for the impact on the community, impact on their people.